Well, I will admit that I have been lazy this morning. It was chilly last night, uh, so it took me a while to get up and get going. I just didn't want to get out and be out and about when it was uh, cold outside. Uh, in fact, it's been so chilly that I've been wearing my down jacket instead of my lighter one here. Now, I put my lighter one on because I think we're going to take a little walk around where I am. I am at Fort Warden State Park, and I think this is the nicest state park I have ever been to. Uh, not just the Washington State Park, uh, but any state park. This place is awesome. Uh, normally I've been parking over on the other side of the little peninsula here, but today I decided to park on this side so that I can hike up a little trail here and kind of give you a better look at things. Maybe we'll go over to the other side after we hike here. Uh, I did a little quick hike here the other day uh, and just have been amazed. I've been spending every day here. Um, this is in the little town of Port Townsend out on the Olympic Peninsula here in Washington State. Uh, and I usually tell people that are not familiar with Washington that uh, Port Townsend is my favorite town in uh, all of Seattle State. <laughs> so, uh, here in my favorite spot, and this is actually the first time I've been to Fort Warden. I've been to Port Townsend many, many times in the past, but uh, just never have gotten out here to Fort Warden. And now I'm a little bit upset with myself for not doing it in the past, but we'll make up for it. I have been making up for it, hanging around here the last few days. And uh, let's go take a little walk and show you at least a little bit of the grounds here. This is just amazing. Can we just take a moment and realize that this is mid-October in the Pacific Northwest. Well, look at that sun, which I'm happy about because, you know, there I'm pulling in some power now, here again in mid-October. And we also have, up here, the moon is still out. So a little bit of cool stuff, a little bit of strange stuff. Now, I did mean to mention, and I think I forgot, that this is a uh, Washington State Park, which means you do need a Discover Pass. I've been talking about these on my vlogs lately. Now, they are a $30 uh, pass for the year, and they do run annually from when you buy them. So you do need one of these, but if you don't have one, you can buy them here. You can pick them up here. Or if you don't want the year pass, you can just buy or pay for a day pass which is ten dollars uh, for the day and then all around the park they have these little payment areas that you can just pick up a little ticket here and drop your payment into one of these little payment slots so you've got options to uh, check out the park here but you definitely will need to pay to use uh, or to enjoy this area uh, but like I said nicest state park I've ever seen so definitely worth whatever you do end up spending for it well I need to apologize when I do these uh, lo-fi vlogs I try to do them in an easy way for me to uh, film and edit uh, unfortunately I've noticed that the footage is a little bit shaky so I'll try to watch that uh, but I do apologize for it um, Anyway, we're going to take a little walk, and this place is just covered with hiking trails all over the place. Uh, although most of them are pretty easy hiking trails, there is a more difficult hiking trail on the other side of the peninsula, but uh, I believe they said there was a landslide, and so that one is not accessible anymore. So that's why I parked over here. And just a little more information about Fort Warden here. Not only is this just an enormous park, but there are two distinct camping areas. Uh, there's one kind of right behind us right now, which they call the forest camping area. And then there's another one on the other side of the peninsula, and that's where I've been hanging out uh, every, bit, every day for the last few days. Um, I do like that side better. Uh, you're farther away from the hiking trails because of that inaccessible trail that has been uh, damaged, uh, but you are closer to the sound and the water. There's actually a beach 
out there with some sand on it. Uh, pretty cool. It almost feels like you're out on the ocean. And of course you can walk between all of that, but uh, it's so big here, this park is so big, that I wanted to kind of cut down a little bit of my walking since I knew I was going to be going uphill, which you can probably already hear in my voice. I, uh, I don't like hills much. <laughs> Yesterday morning it was so much warmer. I didn't wear a jacket. I just had a sweater on and when I got to this point being that it's all Surrounded in trees and covered it was kind of chilly and then as soon as I got back out to the van it was nice and warm again and uh, So today I decided I'm just gonna take a jacket instead of the sweater So there's not just simply hiking and camping to do here at Fort Warden. This was an actual fort at one time, and they do have these batteries. These are, of course, uh, gun batteries that they had giant guns here pointed out at the sound. And uh, I just think it's awesome that these are open and accessible uh, for the most part. They have some of the little rooms closed off, but you can really just walk through these uh, all these little batteries and kind of go through the little catacombs in them. Uh, it's pretty cool here. I find this just absolutely fascinating that this is just all open and here for us to just climb around, walk in and through these uh, old little bunkers and things. It's just such a cool thing to see. Uh, you know, it's when you start to think about what it was used for, of course, it's a little not quite the nicest thing to think about, but uh, seeing them here and kind of decay makes it feel a little bit better, at least in my opinion. Some of these little areas get a little spooky because they are just so dark once you get back in here. And this one seems to be one of those. You know, let's try this. I've got my flashlight on. Yeah, I still can't see anything on the camera, can I? <laughs> Even with a flashlight running. It's dark back in here. And listen to that echo. I don't know if it's picking up on the microphone, but it's odd. It's like uh, kind of hollow, but it's also insulated, I guess. Something up on the ceiling. I'm sure that's not asbestos. <laughs> yeah, this is really cool in here. I really can't get over the fact that they just leave these open for us to climb around, walk over, in and under. But I am very happy that they have because it's just such a cool thing to experience. And then the views from up here are pretty darn good. I asked somebody yesterday, the day before yesterday, what mountain that was. I think she said it was Mount Adams. Uh, the other workers there didn't quite know. Uh, so I think that's Mount Adams over there, if I remember right. Uh, and if she was correct. Um, out of half a dozen of us, only one person seemed to know anything about the surrounding area. Me included, of course. So yesterday I walked all around a bunch of these batteries and in them and through them and just really awesome to be able to do that. Uh, and then I started to walk down here 
And just knowing that these were set up for defense and they had big guns on them, uh, it's kind of interesting to look at them from this viewpoint, I think, is once you get down here and then you can kind of imagine being out on the, uh, the sound out beyond, if you're looking back in this direction, I just thought it was an interesting perspective. So I can't back up any farther because I'm right at the fence that uh, keeps us from falling into the sound down below. But just imagine if you were way out in the sound on a ship, it would be pretty hard to spot these batteries they have built into the hill here. This whole place is just fascinating to me. Now, I don't know enough about the history to kind of relay that to you, but um, there are plenty of signs that give you little bits of information. Um, like one that I found really interesting was these batteries were set up with uh, guns that were on a cantilever, and they were counterbalanced so that they could uh, prop the gun up so that they would have the ability to shoot out to the sound, or they could lower them down uh, with their counterweight so that they could reload them or service them. just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, if you do want to know more and you come out here, there is a museum that's over on the other side of the peninsula, over the side that I've been kind of hanging out at. Um, not sure about the hours on that, but you could probably look that up if you do come out here. Um, I uh, probably don't really want to know any more about the war aspect of this area, but uh, I do really just enjoy seeing everything that's kind of left behind here. And of course, I really just like to walk, so uh, with all the hiking trails that they have here, it's just like miles and miles of hiking trails. This is just an awesome place for me to be. I think that's somebody fishing down there, kind of right at the center of the frame. I didn't notice it till just now. And I've been staring out at the water. It's just such a big expanse of uh, water here. It, uh, it just really feels like you're on the ocean. But of course, this is the sound, which does connect to the ocean. But I mean, this is not actually the ocean. And now that I'm zoomed in, stay zoomed in for just a second. Uh, that's as close as I can get, and of course it's a little bit hazy too, but do you know what that mountain is? I think that's the mountain in question that, and maybe maybe I'm forgetting, but I, th I think that was what they told me was Mount Adams. If you recognize it, maybe. Uh, it does look familiar, but I'm not, I'm just not so good at recognizing things like that. Now, Mount Rainier is a different story because it's easily recognizable with the shape of it. But the rest of them kind of all look like just mountains to me. Yeah, one of the cool things about such a large park like this is even though there are a lot of people out here, you just don't see very many of them. I can hear them off in the distance, but uh, it kind of makes my job of recording video a little bit easier because I always really try to avoid recording people, other people. Uh, you know, you're supposed to get people's consent and all that. Um, although, technically, if you're in a public space, you're not, you know, you're not really, you don't really need to do that, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, just something I don't like to do. So if I'm in a coffee shop or something and recording, I'll just ask the baristas first before I start recording anything. But, you know, it's kind of harder when you're out in a park like this. But there are a lot of people out here. It's just uh, with all this space, it's been easy for me to avoid recording everybody else. Now, my one big problem with a place like this is that I have no sense of direction. So I just kind of follow a trail and have it take me where it goes because if I try to pick a destination to go to, I usually end up not making it there. Not that I get lost, but um, I just enjoy wandering about because I can just never navigate to any place. And with the number of trails here, it's uh, 
pretty easy to just meander off path and end up someplace you didn't really intend to. But it's also beautiful out here. Guess that doesn't really matter. Uh, but I am thinking of this because my friends told me that there is a glass beach. Uh, and I think it's well within walking distance from here. So I kind of would like to just do what I normally don't do and try to head to a specific area. Let me see if I can figure out where I am and if we can try to find that glass beach. So it's supposedly a place where they dumped a bunch of used glass and it's tumbled over and is now just glass out that you can pick up, uh, kind of like down near Fort Bragg in California. Uh, but I couldn't find much information about it online. Uh, but I've had a couple of locals here tell me that it's something I should go see, so probably is now. How do I get there? That's the question. <laughs> Some of the funny things that I notice from time to time when I slow down and start to just look around is uh, there's moss growing on the road here and there's lots of people that walk on this little road and being that it's asphalt I'm sure that uh, Forest Service drives through here well I guess they're state Forest Service but I think they're still called Forest Service right but yeah moss everywhere and me, being a Southern California boy, moss is a cool thing, but to see it growing on the road is kind of strange. Of course, it's growing on the trees and everything else, so why wouldn't it grow on the road here? <laughs> so this is just a guess, but I think we want to head down that little trail. And it looks like a real trail instead of a road, so that'll be nice. But before we go there, another battery is here tucked in this little hill so let's go check this one out since we're walking right by so this is apparently named for a Texas Ranger cool that it tells us that but it doesn't exactly say why this battery was named for a Texas Ranger. Did he serve here? Is he just a popular figure? I'm not really sure. It doesn't say. It's cool, just, uh, just the same. As you hike around out here, you'll come across batteries all over the hiking trails here, so you can go check all of them out. These are just a couple that I have seen before, so um, I was kind of thinking that they're all kind of the same, but of course a little different. And this one had me thinking about the fact that how did they deal with the winter time? This one has a little smokestack, so there must be a little wood stove or something in there, but wouldn't that give away their location if they were burning wood? It's curious, because you know, it'd be cold here in the wintertime. Rainy, maybe snowy too. I'm sure they get snow here. Um, just makes me curious as to how they dealt with that. Would not be a fun place to be stationed in the wintertime as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I think this is where we want to go, North Beach Trail. There's only one way to find out though, right? Okay, I think that's what we're looking for. I think that's North Beach and I believe that's where Glass Beach is supposed to be. Hoping that maybe there will be some signage out here or maybe somebody will be kind enough 
to uh, tell us where Glass Beach is. Although, if you don't know about the Seattle Freeze, maybe this is a good time for me to tell you. Okay, now I probably shouldn't talk about the Seattle Freeze uh, because a gentleman just walked up the trail and I asked him about directions to Glass Beach and he gave me all kinds of information about how to get there. Um, I did mention that there's not a whole lot of information about it online, so he gave me a bunch of uh, extra information that I guess you will only know if you're a local. Um, so very nice of him, but now this puts me in this funny spot because I said I was going to tell you about the Seattle Freeze. Although I guess we're far enough away from Seattle, maybe it just doesn't exist quite so much here. But um, Western Washingtonians, certainly Seattle people, uh, do they call them Seattleites? Maybe, I don't know. Um, but they tend to be a bit reserved. They really don't like to talk to strangers very much. And so people have found trouble making friends uh, and just, you know, finding people to be uh, friendly. Um, it's not that they're unfriendly, it's just that they just don't like talking to locals. Well, some people in Seattle are unfriendly. Let's, you know, it is a big city, so that, that does exist. But it's just kind of a thing here, and they call it the Seattle Freeze. Um, I believe a few years ago, Seattle kind of won the title of being the hardest place to uh, date or find a partner. So <laughs> that's uh, kind of a dubious honor, I guess, but kind of, uh, it's something that you'll feel if you're here, although, if you're like me and you just ignore that and just talk to people, generally people will be responsive back, like this gentleman was. Anyway, so Glass Beach is two and a half miles down the beach from where we are right now. And he did yell over to me as he got closer to the water and told me that um, I have to wait for the tide to go out, that there's no way I could get to it right now where the tide is. So unfortunately, I'm not going to make it there, or I would have walked two and a half miles. Um, so I guess we'll have to save that for another day. But let's walk down to the water anyway, because we're almost there now. What a great, great spot. Uh, I'm happy to know how to get to Glass Beach and that it actually does exist. Um, I'm not terribly disappointed that I can't make it out there. Uh, I guess I could check the tide schedule and maybe try to do it later today, but um, I kind of like having a list of things to do to come back to because I do really like Port Townsend here. So I hope to be back here again in the future. So. Yeah, kind of nice to leave something for next time. Uh, but if you make it out here, and if you check the tide schedules, um, the correct info is uh, if the tide is out, you can walk. It's about two and a half miles. Uh, you got to go around McCurdy Point. And uh, he's, the gentleman that was telling me this said that it's quite obvious that you'll see all the glass there. Um, there is a shorter walk, he said, from St. George, which is a little town just a little ways away. He said you can park in St. George and then walk the other way up the coast and uh, get to Glass Beach that way. So, um, and he said it was a bit shorter of a walk that way. Did I say that? I'm getting lost in thought. Uh, so, anyway, um, be cool to see it someday, but I think I'm going to mosey back to the state park and I think back to the van because I don't know if you can tell now that I'm out of the trees and in the sun it's much warmer in fact probably gonna need to lose this jacket and it's 10 degrees cooler now and cooler, if you know what I mean. Well, I've had a nice little walk, and I've got back to the van here, and I've just watched 
the uh, park ranger give that little car behind us there a ticket. So uh, yeah, remember to get your pass because I'm sure the ticket is probably going to be more than paying the $10 for the day fee or the $30 for the annual pass. Good little reminder there. Um, anyway, now that I am at home, I think I'm going to get some lunch on and Whoa, look at that bad exposure. Okay, <laughs> now that I am at home, I think I'm going to get some lunch on and end this here. I do want to just reinforce that this is the nicest state park I've ever been to. So if you do manage to make it out here to Washington, definitely put this park on your list of some place to go. If you need to camp here, you can camp here. If you just want to come here for the day, uh, like I've been doing the last few days, just a fantastic place to be. So, um, as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.